We are back with the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video Tuesday evening here, the fifth day of December. We're almost done with the first week of the month, and we got some important model data in today, which we'll talk about at the end of the video. It's long-range model data taking us through the winter season. But in the meantime, uh, today, overall, just kind of a December day, right? Clouds, clouds, and more clouds. And while we did have some wet snowflakes, so we had cold raindrops for a good chunk of the afternoon today. You know, we were on the razor's edge today, temperature-wise, both down here at the ground and upstairs just a little bit. Uh, a degree or two colder, it would have been mostly wet snowflakes today. But we were a degree or two warmer, so we had more raindrops than snowflakes for this afternoon. Of course, all of it was low impact. It just was kind of a gloomy day outside. And the uh, radar at 7.06 this evening shows the last of the steadiest precipitation now kind of pivoting to our south and southeast. We'll be left with scattered flurries overnight and maybe a couple of raindrops still in the mix for a time this evening. Now, it was not raindrops, but snowflakes. That was the big story 20 years ago on today's date, back in 2003 on December 5th. At the airport, we had 4.2 inches worth of snow, but this was generally a 3 to 6 inch snowstorm for our area. And this was a, an area of low pressure that was on its way to the east coast and it ended up being a double digit snow event for much of the eastern U.S. This was, you know, pretty early in the season event, uh, especially for the big cities uh, along the East Coast, which this early in the season have a harder time staying all snow. It's a little easier for a changeover to rain to occur this early in the season along the East Coast, but they got walloped on today's date back in 2003. Well, this year has not been particularly snowy so far, of course, and at the airport we're five inches behind average for the season so far, and negative values are found all across our uh, climate reporting stations here in Ohio, Western PA, Southwest New York as well, Erie up to almost seven and a half inches behind average, and Buffalo almost 10 inches behind the, uh, <clears throat> behind the average through December the 5th. Nothing more than a few flurries though overnight into first thing Wednesday morning, maybe a lingering flurry in the afternoon Wednesday. A few peaks of sun possible Wednesday, but the overall flavor of the day is clouds. Once again, now this warm front might produce a stray flurry at times tomorrow night, maybe first thing Thursday morning. But the bigger story with this warm front will be the big change in air mass that's coming by Thursday afternoon and especially Friday. Nice afternoon Thursday, a nice afternoon coming on Friday as we get back into the 50s. I think we're going to stay pretty mild into the uh, weekend. A quick uh, word about the kind of medium and longer range here. Uh, this uh, system that we talked about last evening for the weekend, we have a bit more model clarity today. We're still not seeing the models in total agreement on the exact timing of things, but generally speaking, we're in better shape in terms of uh, computer model guidance today than we were yesterday. Uh, we think this is going to be mostly rain now for Saturday night and most of Sunday. Now, we might see a changeover to some snowflakes by the end of the day Sunday, but especially Sunday night. Uh, snow showers, can't rule out maybe some small accumulations with that. Right now, odds do not favor still anything significant um, in the kind of Sunday night, Monday morning time frame, but we'll keep an eye on things. Now, beyond that, chilly next week, but nothing to write home about, nothing crazy. I think we'll have a lot of highs in the upper 30s uh, during the middle of and latter portions of next week. But then as we go closer to the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19, 20 uh, of December, that's when we have a better chance of seeing a more prolonged, mild trend. That trend may reverse itself in time for the upcoming holidays. Let's talk about the longer range. And today on the fifth day of the month, uh, we every month on the fifth, we get an update from what's called the European Seasonal Forecast Guidance. So this is longer, longer range stuff here from the European Center. Uh, we can break things down by season and by month. And of course, at this time of the year, we're focusing on the winter season. It's always nice to see this data coming in at this time of the month, giving us hints about what the modeling is seeing, especially now that we're into the season. Uh, this is our first uh, guidance from the European Center that we've gotten in the winter season so far. And here's the map for December. Pardon me, no surprise. December is likely to be a warmer than average month in a lot of the U.S. Now, as I just told you, you know, we're in the middle of a chilly stretch right now. We're going to have some chilly days next week, but no sort of crazy cold anytime real soon. Might see a little bit of a pattern change as we head closer to the holidays. But you know, I think it's going to be a different story as we go into the first of the year. And, you know, this guidance, along with some other long range guidance, really is reinforcing this idea that a distinctly different period is coming, we think, as we head into the new year. It may last through the rest of meteorological winter. Here's January's map and then February. Now, this longer range guidance graphically has a hard time seeing uh, cold in the longer range. So you, a lot of times you don't see much blue on this. When you see some blue, 
uh, it tells me that there's a pretty good cold signal. Even if it's not a lot, it, the fact that it's seeing some blue here in January indicates that, you know, odds are that there's going to be a probably a below average area that encompasses many areas that had a pretty balmy month of December. And the signal gets even stronger in February. This was a key part of our annual winter forecast that we'd have a slow start to winter and maybe a really backloaded uh, season. And this is a pretty strong signal. Uh, you know, this is ridge in the west, trough in the east kind of stuff here uh, for February. So, you know, I remain pretty bullish that uh, we're going to see a quite a bit of a different stretch of weather in January and February than we have in December and that we had last January and February in 2023. I haven't seen any model data to kind of uh, dissuade me from that uh, notion. We're going to do an official kind of update. Uh, it'll be kind of short and sweet, but we'll do a little update to our winter forecast later this week, Thursday, maybe Friday, um, a month after the original, uh, original issuance of our winter forecast. A lot of times we kind of like to do a little progress report and uh, make any changes as needed. But, you know, at this point, I don't see a lot of, you know, things that really contradict our, our ideas from about a month ago. But we'll keep looking at the data a little bit and we'll have an update on Weather for Weather Geeks later this week about the kind of overall seasonal trends for the winter season. In the meantime, thank you for watching on this Tuesday evening. I'll see you right back here, same time, same place, on Wednesday.